Yeah, Hollywood did remake this classic film. Your move, moviegoer. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of RoboCop. What if I told you that even the worst neighborhood in America could be made completely safe? How do I know this? Because it's happening right now in every country in the world but this one. It is great to see American machines helping to promote peace abroad. So then tell me, why can't we use these machines here at home? Why is America so robophobic? Robophobic? Not me. I love robots. In fact, most people love robots. Why do you think Hollywood created C-3PO and R2-D2, Transformers, Terminators, Replicants, Johnny Five, WALL-E, Data, David, and even Fembots? But just as Omnicore realizes that the public will relate even more to a man in a machine, so have the suits at the studios. The original Robocop, made back in 1987, was such an instant classic that it made Peter Weller a movie star practically overnight. That is until he said he'd be just as happy playing jazz, and audiences said, okay. Let's hope Sweden's Joel Kinnaman is a little more savvy in his interviews. Kinnaman landed this gig during the short window when AMC's The Killing was considered great television, and he'd landed that role off of the hit Swedish film Easy Money. Speaking of foreign films that have popped up on Hollywood's radar, that's also how Brazilian director Jose Padilla came on board Robocop. His 2007 Elite Squad focused on Brazil's real-life SWAT team, like a South American version of Indonesia's The Raid, which has put director Gareth Evans on Hollywood's radar. Evans has The Raid 2 coming up, but Padilla already made his sequel, and has thus graduated to Tinseltown. But this new Robocop also has an impressive lineup of established talent, including Gary Oldman, Michael Keaton, Jay Baruchel, Jackie Earl Haley, Samuel L. Jackson, and even Jennifer L., who made a bit of a name for herself recently in Contagion and Zero Dark Thirty. Sure, they're not particularly viable at the box office independently, but together? Still, Sony is playing it safe here after their other Paul Verhoeven remake, Total Recall, failed to break even. Remember, a studio only gets about half of a film's box office haul. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have learned their lesson on the budget, but at least they moved this remake to a less competitive release date. You know, going back to that man in the machine idea, it seems with these remakes, Hollywood only has eyes for the machine half of these deceptively sophisticated films. So question is, while the Total Recall remake forgot to include its human side, does this Robocop remake have a soul? Why is America so robophobic? Oh my gosh, I would totally watch the Novak element. I thought Samuel L. Jackson was used to such great effect here, with his awesome hair and Iron Man style graphics. By the way, Iron Man casts a big shadow over this movie that I hadn't anticipated. Of course I felt this movie would have to, uh, you know, reconcile with the original Robocop film, but I never imagined how much Iron Man would play into this. And I guess I should have, considering how much Iron Man is a part of the public consciousness these days, uh, thanks to three movies and the Avengers. But Robocop really kind of played like a darker, more psychological version of Tony Stark's story uh, with some elements of the island of Dr. Moreau, which I was kind of digging, and I kind of dug this entire movie. I would kind of categorize it as a guilty pleasure, uh, but the reason it didn't totally work for me uh, was because I think it felt very small in scale and scope. Uh, I think that it started out very well. I thought the stuff done in the Middle East showing how Omnicore was using its uh, product abroad was very compelling and I thought a really great uh, real-world application uh, and modernization of the original Robocop story. They upped the ante there. And I think the movie never quite got back to that level. Uh, and it started, well, as it continued to unfold, it started to remind me a little bit of a television show. And I think that Robocop's problem is really Hollywood's problem at large. And that's that television is getting so good and is able to do so much with its smaller budgets thanks to the advancements in special effects uh, and also con continually um, increasingly sophisticated writing that it's the line between television and movies is blurring and I think movies have to go so far in the other direction and up their game to such a degree to differentiate themselves from television that um, I think they're still have they're still learning that because for instance I'm watching Almost Human right now on Fox very good show I came for Carl Urban I was stuck around for Michael Ely who I think is delivering one of the best uh, human robotic performances 
in the history of Hollywood, right up there with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Summer Glau from the Terminator uh, franchise. But for instance, that show is also a, a futuristic show where a robot is a police officer. Uh, and there were huge similarities uh, to Robocop, not only in terms of, you know, theme and style, uh, visual style, but also the quality of the special effects. So, uh, you know, I kind of felt when I was watching Robocop that it wasn't much different from what I could, could watch at home, uh, you know, for free in the comfort of my own home. Uh, that said, though, Robocop still has a lot going for it. It's a very good movie. Uh, not a great movie, but a very good movie and, uh, you know, a guilty pleasure. Uh, so what did I like about Robocop? Uh, I, besides the opening, which I thought was the best part of the movie. But for instance, I could never get tired of watching Robocop just walk around. Uh, it's still a lot of fun to do. Uh, I love the sound he makes, even though you think Omnicore could afford some more oil for him so he would just be silent. But it still looked cool, and I think kudos go to Joel Kinnaman for really selling it. Uh, there were set, uh, pictures of him on set having to wear a Robocop-type suit, so even though I'm sure his performance was augmented by special effects and post, he had to really give that robotic feel himself uh, in front of the camera. And he does. And I don't want to give any twists, but there's like some parts of the film where he has to be less than human. And I thought Joel Kinnaman did that really well. And I've been worried about him, both him and Muriel Enos, that I've been afraid that they would be dragged down to the bottom of the entertainment ocean with the killing, as it, you know, offended a bunch, annoyed a bunch of people with its lack of resolution after season one. Uh, and also just kind of falling out of the spotlight. And I felt that those talented actors would go down with the ship. But I think that with great performances like this, maybe they won't. Uh, so I hope that a lot of people see this. I mean, I'm worried about it. Did very poorly at the box office yesterday, although there's some speculation that's because of this horrible weather we're having as the storm makes its way across the United States. But still, I'm, I am worried that maybe not enough people will see this. But Joel Kinnaman, very, very good here. And the whole cast is good. The cast is really, really good in this film. Everybody's here to play. Nobody's just collecting a paycheck, which I really respected. Uh, but I think Michael Keaton was excellent, Jennifer L., um, Michael, uh, Jackie Earl Haley was great. But the, it really is the Joel Kinnaman and Gary Oldman show. Gary Oldman is great here. It was so great. He's like Jim Gordon good, the stuff that he contributed to Christopher Nolan's franchise. I really liked what he did here. And if he's this good in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, uh, we're really in for a treat. I've been a little worried that he's just kind of like Robert De Niro gone over to paycheck acting these days, but uh, with the exception of Nolan's franchise, but this apparently is also an exception. He's very good here. Uh, so in addition to the acting, and it is fun to watch these robots walk around. I just never got tired of it. I loved seeing the, you know, the big, uh, they almost look like the small uh, walkers from Star Wars. Those are very cool. Uh, but the other thing I liked about the movie, surprisingly, was the script. Now again, Television writing is getting very good, so this isn't something that is just, you know, unique to film. But still, I think it deserves a shout-out. It's a good script that not only deals, I think, very well with the, um, you know, the moral complications that were are, that are presented here, but also, you know, what drives people in business and, uh, you know, their reputations, even in the, re the business of medicine. I think that's all addressed really well. I think uh, they really explore the benefit that robots could have to police, uh, the police, uh, you know, uh, to law enforcement. I think that's very well explored. They, I think they do a lot here, which is very good. Uh, and there's also some very clever lines. Uh, for instance, one I really liked, I don't want to give some, uh, like uh, anything plot twists away, but this isn't going to spoil anything. But for instance, uh, Robocop is apprehending a criminal, and the guy's like, please, I have a wife and kid. And Robocop looks it up, and he's like, you don't have a child, but I do. And I was like, oh, such a great simplistic, it's like almost like um, Die Hard level writing, the first one. Very, very good. Very neat, very simplistic, but yet very powerful. So I really liked that element of the film. I just, you know, I think it's a good film. It's not a great film, but it's a good film. And as I said, it's a guilty pleasure. So if you're at all curious and if you're at all on the, even on the fence about seeing RoboCop, I say go. I don't think you'll regret it. It's a little slow and during the origin story, but I don't want to discourage Hollywood from doing these drawn out origin stories. I think they're important, even though they maybe it went on a little too long here. I, I, and also maybe the television feel brought it down a little bit. But I'm glad he didn't just wake up and they're like, he's Robocop all of a sudden. They really explored the, both the physical and emotional toll that that transformation took on Joel Kinnaman's character, but also, um, you know, on his family and also even Gary Oldman. I think that was really well done, uh, if, even if it did drag a little bit. So go see it. I didn't see it in IMAX 3D. I just saw it regular. Maybe it seems more, like, cinema-worthy. In IMAX 3D, so I'd be interested to hear from people who did see it that way. But I say, you know, if you have no interest in it, you can skip it. But if you have any interest at all, go. I don't think you'll regret it. All right, so that's my review of RoboCop. Thank you for watching, uh, and I hope you'll uh, leave below your own thoughts on the film, and you can check out some other episodes right now.